What's going on guys, it's Troy from What Gear Reviews and once again, I've been up until the middle of the night searching for the very best tips and tricks for the Galaxy Z Flip 4 and the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and this time I've been looking for battery tips. So if you're looking to maximize the battery life on either one of these devices, this is the video that you've been looking for. So just to give you some insight into why I decided to make this video, have you ever heard that saying, if you've got nothing good to say, then don't say anything at all? Well, as you probably well know, the internet does the opposite of that. And at some point, these phones are gonna get criticized for their battery life. So I've created this list of tips and tricks to help you fight the good fight when it comes to your phone's battery life. So it's important to know guys, a lot of these tips are power versus performance and sometimes power versus convenience. So I'm not encouraging you to do all of these tips. What I am encouraging you to do is to pick and choose the tips that make the most sense for how you use the phone. That way, by the time you get to the end of this video, your phone will be a battery beast. And if you're wondering where I got these wallpapers from, I did share the secret link to them in my other video, the first 25 things to do on the Galaxy Fold 4. So I'll link that at the end. Okay, so this first tip is a massive battery saver and it will prevent you from getting push notifications continuously from emails and other apps. So just keep that in mind. Swipe down from the top, swipe down again. Swipe across here on the quick settings menu and hit the plus. Now here, see this one sync at the top? We wanna drag that down here and hit done. Now we have this setting within our quick settings menu. And when we turn that off, we're telling the phone not to refresh any data in the background. And when you've got hundreds of apps running on your device, all pushing data to your phone, it's using a lot of power. So if you wanna stay in control of what's going on and the data your phone is using in the background, you can manually now just go into the quick settings menu and toggle that on and off. So think about how you could use this sync to help you out with your day. Okay, so you might be wondering why I switched to the Fold 4 quickly for this tip. It's because my SIM card's actually in this phone and this tip requires a SIM card in the device. So check this out. We go to settings on the device. Here we go to connections. And then within the sub menu, we go to mobile networks. And then here is an interesting setting. And let me explain why this matters. See where we've got network mode. You can actually choose what network band the phone automatically connects to. And you can see right now it's 5G, 4G, 3G, 2G. Now 5G is by far the fastest, but there's not enough masts around in most parts of the world to actually handle voice calls and text messaging services and all that kind of stuff. So because of that, what happens when you use 5G is you're actually connecting to two different bands, 5G and 4G, let's say, or 5G and 3G, and it's using more power whenever it does that. So if you wanna save power, you can actually change the network mode to 4G, 3G, 2G, or 3G and 2G, or 3G only. All of these will use less power than the top one. Just keep that in mind where that setting is. You can switch it back and forth as and when you need to. Okay, tip number three, staying within the same menu, settings, connection, and mobile networks. So here you see voice over LTE, V-O-L-T-E. So voice over LTE can potentially use 50% more battery than a regular phone call. Now some mobile network operators in the world depend pretty heavily on this. So if you turn it off, it could ruin your phone call experience. So just be mindful of that. But if you do turn it off, you will potentially save battery because right now you see on my one, use 4G data networks for calls whenever possible. That means it will use that by default if I've got a 4G signal, whereas it could just use the regular phone network signals. Turn that off if you want. Be mindful of that one, depending where you are in the world. Okay, these next few are under the radar and they are battery drainers for sure. So check this out. We go to settings, we go to connections, we go to more connection settings here. And this setting here, nearby device scanning. So what this does is even if you switch off your Bluetooth and your Wi-Fi on your phone, your device is still scanning for other devices near it. And this is to help your device provide better information for you, but also for other people to get better information when it comes to location services. This, however, does use power. And if you switch it off, you will save power. So that's the pro. But the sacrifice is you might lose some of that convenience you have when it comes to knowing what's around you. Okay, tip number five, go to settings, location, then location services. And here are two big battery drainers and they're quite similar to what I just spoke about on the previous tip. So Wi-Fi scanning uses the Wi-Fi even when it's off and it even says it there to scan around to look for networks and that drains power. Tip number six, within the same settings menu, you already know what it is, is turn off the Bluetooth scanning. So Bluetooth scanning, 
is on by default if you skip past it in the setup process and it's used by apps to provide more accurate location services. Again, even when Bluetooth is switched off, unless you switch this off, now your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is actually off. So again, the trade-off is you're saving power in exchange for a little bit of convenience. Okay, tip number seven, and I've switched back to the Galaxy Z Fold 4, reason being you do need the SIM card in in order to enable this setting. So check this out. This is really quite difficult to find. If you go to connections and then go to your Wi-Fi network at the top here, then hit the three dots in the top right corner and go to advanced, here is a setting that's really well hidden, but a great setting to use to save power on your device. So this setting here where it says turn on Wi-Fi automatically is a good one because what it will do is your phone will learn what Wi-Fi networks you use on a daily basis. And when you're not in that area where that Wi-Fi is, it will actually switch off your Wi-Fi automatically, which means you're saving power on autopilot. So if you turn that on, it's a great feature. And then if you do want to connect manually to a coffee shop network or a friend's Wi-Fi or something like that, you can do it manually, connect to that. And if you do that a few times, it will learn that and it will automatically connect to that and then switch off your Wi-Fi when you leave the vicinity. That's a brilliant hidden setting right there. Okay, tip number eight, go to settings, go to battery and device care. And the next few tips will be in this menu system. So try and stay here. Don't close this down in the background. So here where it says battery, we tap that. And then here we tap on the battery graph. And what we can do here is look at the list of apps that we're using. We can see the percentage of battery they're using. Let's say this Soundcore app, for example, is used 6.5% of my battery, I can tap that. And I'm not really using that all the time. I'm only using it when I'm using the earbuds. Where are those actually? And I will say these earbuds are pretty damn awesome for the price they come in at. But anyway, what I wanted to show you here is how you can actually limit the usage of the app. So here at the bottom in the little small writing here, it says limit usage. You hit that and you can actually put the app to sleep or you can put the app to deep sleep. So by putting it into deep sleep, it's using very, very minimal power. So what you can do within this list here is figure out which apps are really not that important and put those apps into deep sleep or just regular sleep, which is something that I don't get much of lately. So if I could get a thumbs up and a subscribe for my lack of sleep due to making these videos for you guys, I'd appreciate it. So tip number nine, that was one way to manage apps and put them into deep sleep. There is another way to do it and it's probably a quicker way. So check this out in the device care menu again, we tap on the battery again, but this time we scroll to the bottom here and we can go to battery usage limits. And you can see right now I've got the put unused apps to sleep. So it's actually doing that automatically. And then if we go into the deep sleep settings here, we can actually choose apps that we want to add to this deep sleep category. So certain apps that you don't use often at all should be here. And if they're not here, you can hit the plus and add them yourself. Do it once, do it right, and it will save you battery in the long run. Okay, back into settings, back into battery and device care. And here's another really sort of well hidden one. See the three dots in the top right corner, tap that. And where it says automation, tap that. Now you have this hidden menu system that can potentially save you a ton of battery power. So optimize daily is on as standard. So I recommend leaving that on. But what you can do here is actually set an auto restart time. And when you enable that, we can go into that setting there and say, right, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I want the phone to actually turn off and turn on again, essentially clearing everything that's going on in the device at 4 a.m every night. Actually, let's make it about 4.30 because I'm usually up to about 4 a.m. writing these scripts. So if you've ever had a problem with a PC or a Mac, the first thing a PC troubleshooting person will tell you to do is switch it off and switch it on again. Essentially, that's what this is doing for you automatically on a daily basis and hopefully during your sleep. So you won't even notice that it's done it, but it's just a really good way of switching everything off and starting from fresh each day. Okay, tip number 11. In the battery and device care section again, hit the three dots again, go to automation again, but this time we're looking at adaptive power saving. This is off by default. If you enable this, what the phone will automatically do is decide when the power is not needed and it'll actually slow down the performance, slow down the battery drain automatically for you. Again, this is a trade-off. This might affect the optimal performance of the device in exchange for power. Okay, tip number 12, this is another really well hidden battery saving tip that probably nobody's gonna tell you about. So it comes down to me to tell you. Go into settings, battery and device care, tap on battery. 
Here, scroll to the bottom where it says more battery settings. Now here where it says performance profile, you can see right now is standard and it's using the maximum performance pretty much that the Snapdragon 888 Plus has to offer. Now the Snapdragon 888 is the best of the best when it comes to smartphone processors next to Apple's Bionic chip. And if you limit the performance just by 20, 30%, this phone is still gonna be better than 90% of the phones on the market right now. So if you want to, and you're not a heavy user when it comes to smartphone apps and games and stuff like that, you can set the performance profile to light. This saves power and it also prevents your device from getting hotter. But again, you're sacrificing performance for power. If you're not a gamer, you probably not even notice this at all if you change it. Tip number 13. So. You probably noticed the last few apps are all here in the battery and device care section of the phone. And you might wanna come back to this from time to time to adjust certain things if you do want the optimal performance and you don't care that much about battery on a particular day. So a quick way to come back here without having to go to the settings and all this every time is to hit the three dots in the top right corner and actually add this battery and device care to the home screen as an app. So I have the app here now on the desktop. If you hold your finger down, you can actually access the storage, the memory and the device protection settings as well. That's just a little battery and performance usability hack. Okay, tip number 14, swipe down from the top, swipe down again, swipe across on the quick settings menu and hit the plus here. There is a setting here that can help you save battery and it's called extra dim. Now, if you drag that down, into the quick settings menu here. What you can do is toggle this on and off as and when you need to. This reduces the brightness of the screen below the usual minimum brightness of the display. When you're using less brightness on the display, you're using less power. So that little tip right there will help you when it comes to battery life. Okay, tip number 15, and this is probably something you already knew, and it's similar to the extra dim feature, which you can toggle on and off. If you swipe down and swipe down again, you'll see there is the power saving toggle. Of course, if you use this, guess what it does? It saves power. So you can use this all day if you want to. You will notice a slowdown, that's for sure. But just know that it's there and use it when you need it. Next tip, settings, display. Now within display, adaptive brightness is on and that's fine. I quite like adaptive brightness. It will adjust according to the light conditions around you. But what I wanna show you here is the screen timeout. So right now I've got it on 10 minutes because I'm filming the video and I don't want the phone switching off every 30 seconds. By default, it is set to 30 seconds, which is good but it can get better when it comes to saving power if you set it to 15 seconds. So every time you don't use the screen for 15 seconds, the screen will automatically close, therefore saving power. You might find that this annoys you and you might wanna go back to 30 seconds or even longer, but test it out with 15 seconds. If it doesn't bother you, you're gonna save quite a bit of power without even realizing it. Tip number 17, back into settings, back into display. This time we're looking at motion smoothness. So motion smoothness is the refresh rate on the display. As standard out of the box, this is gonna be on the adaptive refresh rate, which means it's gonna go all the way up to 120 Hertz. That's 120 refresh cycles per second on the screen. Now, if you set it to standard, this actually locks the maximum refresh rate to 60 Hertz. It's not locking it to permanently to 60 Hertz, but it will go up to 60 Hertz when it needs to, and it won't go past it. And it even says here, you'll get a longer battery with the 60 Hertz screen refresh rate. Okay, tip number 18, and this is only for you guys who are really, really serious about saving power on your phone. So I just showed you how you can switch between 60 Hertz and 120 Hertz as the maximum refresh rate. Well, this app here called Galaxy Max Hertz actually allows you to have way more control of your device and what you can do with the refresh rate. So you can actually choose a refresh rate in the middle of what's available on the phone by default. So you could actually set the refresh rate to 96 Hertz. If you feel 60 is too slow, 120 is too fast, 96 Hertz is gonna save power compared to the 120. There's also a bunch of cool little add-ons here like the slider, which gives you manual control of the refresh rates. And you can also add quick settings to the top of the device as well, if you install this app. This app is quite new and undiscovered by so many people, but it opens the door to so many 
battery saving features. So if you're into modding your phone and stuff like that, then this one could take your battery saving skills to the next level. I'll let you guys play with this app and test it out for yourselves. Also, because it's free, you can make donations to the developer to say thank you. And if you want to say thank you to me, there's a super thanks button below this video. Okay, tip number 19, settings display. Now, people love to argue with me about this, but here's the facts. This is a Super AMOLED screen. It's an OLED, essentially. The black areas of the screen are not being powered because there's nothing on them. Each pixel is an organic light-emitting diode. So if it's off, it's off, it's not using power. So if you set your phone to dark mode, all of the areas on the screen right now that are not being powered, they're not using power. So before you start an argument with me that this does not save power, listen to this. When you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. So you are saving power if you use this. And bonus points to anyone who knows where that quote came from. Tip number 20. Okay, go to settings. This time we're gonna to go to lock screen. And what I wanna draw your attention to here is the always on display. So if you wanted to save a little bit of extra power, you could turn that off. This means when your phone screen switches off, it will just be black, nothing will show up. Therefore, saving power. Tip number 21, settings lock screen again. This time, instead of switching off the always on display, if we tap on tap to show, we have more options here. I like the always on display personally. I find it useful. So in order to keep it, but still save power, there are some things we can play around with. For example, we can turn off the auto brightness and actually set the brightness of the always on display to low. Saving power again, OLED screen, black parts of the screen, less brightness on the white parts of the screen, you're gonna save power. And I do recommend you leave your always on display on tap to show as well, because if you have it on any of these other ones, it's gonna light up on its own all the time. Okay, tip number 22. Thank you for making it this far into the video. And do you remember how we added that device care button here on the home screen? If we tap that now and go to battery and we go to more settings at the bottom here, this is kind of a, good housekeeping tip. So fast charging is fantastic. If you're in a pinch, you need to charge your phone quickly before you leave the house. This is good. But when you're constantly charging your phone at rapid speeds, it's actually degrading the battery faster than it would if you just charged it at a regular sort of trickle charge speed. So by turning off fast charging, you're actually preserving the quality of the battery in the device. Again, trade-off is convenience for long-term battery health. Tip number 23, back into the device care. We can use the shortcut again and go to battery straight away from the home screen now. And again, we go to more battery settings. But this time I wanna show you something that doesn't really improve the battery life today, but it will improve the battery life over the course of the time you have your phone. Now, I would only suggest you turn this on if you think you're gonna keep your phone for three, four, five years before you upgrade, because what this does protect battery is it limits the maximum capacity to 85% by not going 100% every time, just like the other tip, you're actually looking after the battery's health in the long run, but you're gonna lose 15% battery and if you're already struggling with battery life, the reality is you probably won't wanna use this if you wanna maximize your battery life. And this is the last tip, and it's an important one. So we go to settings, we go to advanced features, we go to side key, and as default, when you hold the power key at the side of your phone, it wakes Bixby. And if you're wondering what the hell is Bixby, that's exactly my point. So set it to the power menu, hold the power key down, and turn your phone off because this is the best way to maximize your battery on your Galaxy Flip 4 and Z Fold 4. So thank you for watching this one. If you guys want more tips and tricks on these devices, there's some thumbnails on screen right now. I spent a long time making these videos and I like to think they're some of the best tips you can find anywhere on the internet for these phones. So go check those out. Let me know what you think of those. And if you have any of your own, leave those in the comments below. If you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man. And I appreciate you guys. See you in the next one. Don't be late.